President Donald Trump just threatened to call off the 2020 election. Take a look. We can joke, we can play games, we can have fun. You can't have this guy as your president. You can't have... Maybe I'll sign an executive order. You cannot have him as your president. Cheers and applause. Hey, uh, guess Natalie Portman was right. That's how democracy dies with thunderous applause. I know. Uh, but anyway, look. This is an amazing statement. It, even if it, I, and I know it's going to be fun as like, oh, no, you understand. It was a joke. He was joking about making sure that, you know, uh, I do an executive order, which, by the way, he doesn't have the power to do so, uh, to try to keep Joe Biden off the ballot. Understand there, right, that, first of all, thank goodness you can't do that. But then what are you afraid of? Are, are you afraid of democracy? Is that is that your problem? Oh, no, I actually do think I, I, I know why he's afraid, right? Because um, there's investigations into him. I think that he's afraid that if he loses, that he's going to end up going to jail, right? Uh, that's got to be a fear on his mind. Now, why would he go to jail? Again, numerous financial crimes, uh, fraud, the stuff that, you know, the Southern District of New York, by the way, is investigating, uh, all that stuff. He's afraid that there's going to be political retribution. Whether or not there would actually be, like, would this really happen? I don't necessarily know. Uh, Democrats have been incredibly weak uh, on all of that. And so there might be a situation that if Donald Trump loses, or I should say it's very likely that uh, if Donald Trump loses, that's the situation. Democrats would be like, eh, it's fine. Uh, no, we're not going to do any investigations into Donald Trump. We're going to end that stuff. <laughs> because it turns out it was just all political. We don't care when rich people screw people over. Uh, and, and by the way, related news today, Deutsche Bank, once again, uh, has been found to have been uh, money laundering. So for the world's incredibly wealthy. You guys remember the Panama Papers? Where it, you know, turns out that uh, rich people were money laundering and doing all sorts of illegal things with their uh, billions. Does anybody remember that? No, because nobody talked about it for the last four years. I remember talking about this and reporting on it in my show, and nothing happened. Nothing happened whatsoever. Uh, and so, do I think that Democrats would actually focus if Donald Trump loses on, you know, investigating his financial crimes and then putting Donald Trump in prison afterwards? Absolutely not, because that's not how power works. Nonetheless, Donald Trump is a very fearful person uh, because, well, he's a conspiracy theorist. He's never met a conspiracy he didn't like, and he's a master at projection. Uh, and so, you know, what he would want to do to his opponents and what he has talked about doing to his opponents, jailing Hillary Clinton, uh, wanting to jail Joe Biden, uh, or not, not Biden, sorry, to jail Obama. I mean, he's talked about it. Would he actually do it? If Maybe if he has enough power. Let's hope we don't have to find out. So nonetheless, I think this is like, a, you know, the whole idea would be a self-preservation move uh, because of reprisal. Uh, and so... Understand that that's kind of why he also wants to declare victory before all the counts are, uh, votes are counted on November 3rd. That's a real problem, right? Because we have a pandemic. And in a pandemic, a lot of people have decided to vote by mail. So absentee ballots, uh, things like that. So those votes are counted slower than in-person voting. So if there's an appearance, right... If there's an appearance that Donald Trump is winning uh, because the in-person votes are being counted first, and that's going to be a majority of his base going out and voting, while the slower votes, you know, the, the ones that take longer, for their, will primarily be for Joe Biden, well, then he's going to say, well, that's it. I won. I won November 3rd. Uh, these other votes that are coming in, you know, two, three, four days afterwards don't count. And it's just evidence of fakery. And that's it. Well, that's not true at all. But he's going to say that. And he's going to try to continue to maintain power. And so 
That's a real problem, as I said. And, and look, the reason it's going to shake out that way is because Republicans don't give a shit about COVID. Like, we know this. They've been urged to vote in person. I've reported on this before, where Republican congressman and Donald Trump himself said, don't vote by mail. No, no, no. Don't vote by mail. Go and vote in person because he plans to not count these mail-in ballots and calls him. He's already been on a crusade over the last few months calling mail-in voting fraudulent, even though he and his family have used mail-in ballots uh, before and he actually even used them this time. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because if more Democrats use mail-in voting, then he's going to look at those and say, well, we got to get rid of those because I can't lose to Joe Biden. Can't do it. Can't do it. <sighs> November, it's it's looking like it's going to get bad. I like, I have a feeling that it's going to be real bad. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and look, again, this is somebody who perceives this uh, losing an election as opening himself up to being uh, to having political retribution. Now, Donald Trump's a guy who's had a lifetime of white-collar criminality. But if he loses the election, and this is the way he's framing it, by the way, is that he's going to end up being, uh, you know, uh, having the establishment go after him and make him a quote-unquote political prisoner. I'm really, really concerned about that because the result of that is what's going to happen to all of his followers, the, the, tr the true Trump believers. Right, the, who also happen to be extremely right wing and well armed. I don't know. It kind of feels like we're sitting on a political powder keg. I don't know if there's going to be violence from Trump supporters if Biden wins. Some have certainly promised that, but I don't know how big or widespread that's going to be. But we have seen him plant the seeds of stochastic terrorism before. Now, there's one more thing, too, really, really important news. He's in a rush to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg with somebody who's a loyalist. Why? Well, one reason is, of course, uh, to try to get votes from hardcore, you know, conservatives who may have been falling off, right? Uh, as well as, I think more importantly, possibly having a, a court in place to reject mail-in ballots. Again, he's calling them fake ballots. Uh, they're not fake, but of course, facts don't matter uh, to them. Uh, they want to disenfranchise you, uh, William Barr, the Republican Party, Donald Trump. Uh, they want to discount your vote because it, it won't go to them to keep them in power. Basically, what it boils down to is Trump wants to steal the election. Do you know who does that? Authoritarians. Netanyahu tried to steal an election. Bolsonaro stole an election. He jailed uh, Lula da Silva on phony corruption charges. Vladimir Putin, same thing. Uh, what is it going to take for people to understand that this man is a danger to democracy in this country? I mean, I remember the good old days back in 2012 when the worst thing about Mitt Romney was the fact that his policies were complete and utter shit. And then he called 47% of the American people moochers and lazy. At least we didn't have to worry about a dictator. <laughs> now we've got that with Donald Trump. And you've got foreign journalists that are warning us what it looks like on the outside. Because I know... That, you know, to, to a lot of people, you're going to look at, uh, you're going to listen to what I'm saying and be like, oh, come on, yeah, it's not that bad. You're, you're going a little overboard with this, you know, everything's a fascist, everybody's a fascist thing. No, no, no. Here's the thing. It, it is true. And there are warnings from outside this country, from people on the outside looking in. And they're saying, boy, this does not look good. Uh, for example, there was a journalist from Nairobi. Uh, this is John Allen Namu. He was recently on CNN. Here's what he said. He said, in terms of how totalitarianism starts to establish itself, this is exactly how it happens. You establish your own set of facts, which Donald Trump has done, and the Republicans. You demonize people who have an opposing view, and you start to divide people into different sections or sub-communities. All things, like I said, that stuff is done. Okay. Um, not only that. He said, it, 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 look, it looks fairly clear what's happening in the states. Americans are too close to this story to understand what is going on, and they should wake up before November. There you go. Uh, Rana Ayyub, an opinion writer for the Washington Post located in Mumbai, India, 
said this and actually drew a comparison between Trump and uh, uh, Modi. He said, uh, she said, I, like many Indians, am viewing what's happening in America with a great deal of apprehension, fear, and anxiety. This is what authoritarian regimes all over the world are repeating. Again, Duterte, uh, Putin, Netanyahu, all these people, um, Bolsonaro. Um, I hope Americans wake up and realize that this really can't continue. Luke Harding, a journalist in London who's written a great deal about Russia, authoritarianism under Putin, said that he sees, quote, depressing parallels between Putin and Trump. Uh, and so that's how people outside of the U.S. are seeing this administration and seeing what is happening. It is happening before our eyes. For those of you who wondered, what, what would you have done if you were in 1930s Germany and you were seeing the takeover uh, of, of the republic by the, neo, uh, by the Nazi fascist party, then, well, we're basically living in it at this point. This is no longer a choice between red and blue, Democrat, Republican, uh, 99% versus 1%. This is between democracy and fascism. And by the way, our, our democratic institutions right now are weak, are incredibly weak under a conservative assault. That has been going going on for a very, very long time, okay? And so that right there, we, we have to have a democracy to work into. If we don't have that, how are we supposed to fight for good policy? And so, look, understand that we can fight the oligarchy, we can fight the donors, we can fight them through the democratic process. If we no longer have a democratic process, we can't exactly fight, Right? Because it is much more difficult to fight against an authoritarian regime that hosts its own version of brown shirts and has no problem sending federal troops to bust people's heads in order to, for the president to get a photo op. November is going to decide, do we still actually have some semblance of a democracy or we don't? And look, fellow leftists, who do you think Donald Trump's going to crush first? Is it going to be the, you know, Bidens of the world, the, the, the centrists? who are more than happy to assist him, or, you know, the Nancy Pelosi's who will vote in his, uh, you know, defense budget? No, he's going to go after the leftists. He's going to go after the left first. And then, then they're going to go after the trans people, the LGBT+, uh, and finally, they're going to go after the centrists. We have to prevent that uh, so that we can, buy, you know, fight both the conservatives and the centrists and actually enact good progressive policy. Uh, but we can't do that if we have an actual fascist takeover of this country. This is serious, and it's about time to treat it as, like this, uh, with the seriousness that it actually deserves.